making the trek out here to uh, Bourbon Community College. I want to thank the college for making this venue available for us to host a candidates forum for Bergen County Board of Commissioners. Um, we have all four candidates running for two seats, present on the dais. My name is Barbara King and I'm Vice President of the League of Women Voters of Bergen County. I want to, at this time, again thank the college for hosting us and I want to introduce Suzanne Wetzel, Vice President of the college. She just wants to say a few words. and welcome to Bergen Community College. We're so glad that you're all here. Um, my name is Suzanne Wetzel. I serve as the Vice President of External Affairs here at the college. And on behalf of President Friedman and our Board of Trustees, I'm honored to welcome you to our campus for tonight's Candidate Forum. It's really exciting. These are such important events. Candidate Forums are vitally important to our democracy and allow all of us to learn about the candidates on the ballot and prepare us for casting our votes. It's through this engagement that we're all empowered to not only understand more clearly the issues of importance to our community, but also to engage in deeper, more meaningful conversations with our fellow voters. I know we're gonna all benefit from tonight's discussions, and I look forward to hearing from all of the candidates. So again, on behalf of our Board of Trustees, our President, our faculty and staff, I offer you a warm welcome to our beautiful campus, and I thank you for your continuing support of Bergen Community College. The League of Women Voters hosts a number of campaign um, candidate forums throughout um, election season. We always use a moderator who is not from the uh, voting area. Our moderator tonight, Janet Fisher Hughes, made the trek all the way from Camden County. And I appreciate that so much because our local moderators could not moderate because they all can vote for two of the candidates. So at this time, I'd like you to give your attention to our moderator. And would you please hold your applause until the very end of the evening and make sure your electronic devices are silent. Janet? Thank you. Again, my name is Janet Fisher Hughes, and I would like you I'd like to welcome you to the candidates forum on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Bergen County. I'll be moderating this evening. I am on the board of the League of Women Voters of Camden County, as well as the League of Women Voters of New Jersey, and am uh, joined by fellow League member uh, Catherine Burns who will be our timekeeper this evening. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. This means that we never support or oppose individual candidates or political parties for any elective office. The League of Women Voters welcomes all adult citizens, women and men, and students as young as 16 who support our mission. Membership in the League provides opportunities to be involved in the political process without running for office or being active in a political party. For example, coordinating, moderating, or keeping time for a candidate forum are rewarding experiences. We'll train you. Registering new citizens to vote in a naturalization ceremony is inspirational. Attending a council meeting, wearing a button, puts officials on notice that the league is watching. If, if any of this sounds interesting and you would like to join us, Please log on to lwbnj.org to become a member. There are also several of the, my Bergen County colleagues in the audience, and you can speak to them um, at the end. We would like to remind voters that there are three ways they can vote in the upcoming general election. Vote by mail ballot. Registered voters can apply for a vote by mail ballot by following the instructions found at vote.nj.gov or contacting their county clerk. 
The deadline for applying for a vote by mail ballot is October 31st if applying by mail. <laughs> the deadline for applying for a vote by mail ballot in person is Monday, November 6th. Vote by mail ballots cannot be returned to any early voting location or at any polling place for this election. In-person early voting, this option enables all registered voters to cast their ballot in person using a voting machine during a nine day period prior to election day. You can now choose to vote in person when it's most convenient for your schedule. In Bergen County, nine in-person early voting locations will be open Saturday, October 28th through Sunday, November 5th. Hours will be Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. No appointment is necessary. And at your polling place on election day, vote in person at your polling place from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. on election day, Tuesday, November 7th. Moving on to tonight's forum and forum format, I wish to reiterate the League of Women Voters is nonpartisan. Also, as Barbara mentioned, it is league policy that the moderator must not be eligible to vote in the election being moderated and therefore should have no personal interest in the outcome. I live in Pensauken in Camden County. I will now review the basic structure of this evening's forum. And a timekeeper, Catherine Burns, will give a 30 second warning by holding up the yellow card. She will signal that the response time is up by showing the red card. I will allow candidates to briefly finish a sentence. Please come to a quick conclusion when the time has run out. Time may not be banked nor given to another candidate. In this election, there are a total of four candidates, all of whom have joined us this evening, and we are very thankful for that. The candidates are vying for two spots on the Bergen County Board of Commissioners each with a three-year term. Two of the candidates are incumbents. The forum will begin with op opening statements followed by questions submitted by members of the audience. And we will end with closing statements from each of the candidates. I will remind candidates to stick to the issues relevant to the office of the Board of Commissioners and not bring in personal matters or other matters unrelated to the office. So let us begin with opening statements. The candidates will speak in random order. They each have 60 seconds with a 30 second warning. And we begin with Mary Jo Ginchard. Yes. Okay. Good evening, members of the League of Women Voters, participants, guests, and my teammate, of course, Ignatia Law Collins. I am Mary Joanne Ginchard. I stand before you not just as a candidate for county commissioner, but as a wife, mother, grandmother, and proud member of this community. I've spent my life dedicated to service, whether it was captivating audiences as a Broadway performer or representing my fellow citizens as an elected official. My journey began as a young woman trained as an operatic singer. I've traveled extensively performing across the United States and at the Seoul Opera House in South Korea. As an elected official, I've also had the honor of serving as a mayor and as a member of the county planning board experiences that have given me a deep understanding of the challenges and opportunities we face. I've walked in your <coughs> shoes, heard your concerns, and worked tirelessly to make a difference. As a county commissioner, I will be your voice in every decision we make, ensuring that our county's resources are used wisely, efficiently, always keeping the well-being of our community at the forefront. As a county commissioner, I believe you should have a seat at the table and our children never be on the ballot again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Amin Shala Collins. Good evening and happy Monday to all who are in attendance. I want to start by thanking the Women's League of Voters and Barbara King for conducting this important forum this evening. And I want to thank you, the audience, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come here tonight. It is events like this that are the cornerstone of our democracy and our constitutional republic, providing transparency and accountability to our local government. My name is Ignatia La Collins. I bring more than 15 years of public service, business experience, management, and community service to the board. And as your next Bergen County Commissioner, I can affect change by representing the people's voice on the board. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Joan M. Voss. Thank you. Good evening, 
and thank you, League of Women Voters, for hosting this forum tonight. It's wonderful. I am Commissioner Joan Voss. I am a retired teacher. Uh, I've taught for over 41 years. I proudly served the people of Bergen County in an elected office for 32 years, and I have an opportunity to interact with many, many people. Bergen County has about a million people that we represent. My town council had about 45,000 people, and the member of the New Jersey Assembly I had about 200,000 people. My life has been dedicated to public service, whether it be educating my students or representing my constituents. Um, it's the same way I, I try to do every day to care very much about the people of Bergen County. And as a mother and a lifelong educator, I have fought to hold the line on taxes and remember that government plays a very important part. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Good evening. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. I immigrated uh, to the United States at the age of 11. I attended public school, put myself in college, and spent 32 years as a social worker. I have been married to my wife for 32 years and have four children. I, have, I proudly called Bergenfield home for nearly 30 years and have the honor to being elected, uh, elected to office to serve on the bar of council. My career, family, and time in office have been defined by dedication, consistency, and loyalty. I have lived the American dream, and now I'm eager to continue applying my vote, my values on the county level, at the county level, and continue giving back to my community. Thank you. Thank you. Now we come to the question and answer portion of the forum, and I have used my discretion as moderator to select as many different questions as possible that are relevant to this office in the available time. We will have time to ask eight or nine of the questions this evening. Some of the questions submitted by Bergen County residents were similar to each other, so please do not be upset if your particular question is not used. Rand uh, candidates will be called in random order using a sequence I prepared in advance. My order is designed so that as much as possible, no candidate falls in any position, like first or last, more often than the other candidates. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond to each question with a 30 second warning. We will start with this question. Why do you want to serve on the Board of Commissioners? And what will be your highest priority as a board member? And we will start with Rafael Marte. Thank you. I believe public office is about giving back. And serving on the Board of Commissioners allows me to continue to just do that. I was honored, to, and, I was honored and privileged to serve in my hometown of Bergenfield as a councilman. But as a commissioner, I serve on a larger scale. There are reasons why Bergen, Bergen County is the best place to live in, the, in, in New Jersey. And I wanted work to continue and ensure that we keep moving forward. I'm eager to help all the residents and, and, and work with all the residents of, the, of Bergen County. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Shala Collins. <laughs> Hello, I want to serve on the Board of Commissioners because I believe this is civic responsibility with a background in public safety, community engagement. I'm, impa I'm passionate about public service and view this as a way to make a positive difference. I'd like to influence policy. Serving on the board allows me to have a direct impact on local government policies and decisions. And being an advocate, being a commissioner will position me to advocate for specific causes or issues that are important to my constituents. Next, Mary Jo Ginchard. I'm running for Bergen County Commissioner for a variety of reasons. As a former mayor, I was able to touch so many people in my time, and as a planning board member as well. 
And in doing that, you really are able to see where people are going, what their needs are, and everybody has a different situation. So I wanna make a tangible difference in the lives of their fel the fellow residents here, addressing issues such as affordability, infrastructure, and public safety. I want to represent the interests of the constituents, ensuring their voices are heard in every level of decisions in this county. I want everyone to feel that they have a seat at the table. I want to activate, actively contribute to the ongoing development of Bergen County, preserving its appeal as a place to live, work, and raise a family. I don't want you moving out because you can't afford to live here. I want you to be able to afford to stay and raise your family here in Bergen County. We've been in 70 of these municipalities. Bergen County is absolutely beautiful. So to fulfill a sense of civic duty and engage in public service directly impacting the lives of others is extremely, extremely important to me and it is a passion I have had and I have done through my time of serving as a servant to the communities that I have served. I want to pursue and yet in reward the endeavor driven by the passion of Bergen County and make a positive impact. As your former elected mayor, I have served, as I stated, in various offices. And my decision to run for Bergen County Commissioner stems from the combination of all these personal <coughs> motivations and commitment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joan Voss. Thank you. I've dedicated my life to public service, having spent more than 32 years working to serve the people of Bergen County. I bring the perspective of my generation to the board, representing the interests and the rights of senior citizens. I don't believe I have only one highest priority, supporting education, supporting senior services, supporting veterans, and providing human services, and all the time making sure of the fiscal responsibility that is my priority. Thank you. My next question, people are concerned that Bergen County is too costly a place to live. Please tell us what county programs do you think um, need to be uh, better managed to bring back fiscal responsibility and what programs you might look to cut to reduce county expenses. And we will start with Joan Voss. Thank you. Um, I've worked on many, many, many budgets in my lifetime, and we are very transparent on the county level. We hold at least 20 budget sessions open to the public, and the budget is posted online so you can check it out. We go through every single line, dollar by dollar, and make sure that, what we, uh, that we understand the people that you're helping with the dollars that are spent to accomplish the, department's, the various departments' mission. It's often said that budgeting is an exercise in highlighting priorities. We invest, as I said, in our veterans. We invest in our kids. We invest in wonderful academies that we have here in Bergen County, and of course, wonderful Bergen Community College. We're doing all kinds of things to make sure that our kids are going to be successful when they finish school and that they will have uh, a role to play in our society. We try to keep the quality of life, and so I can't really see that I would cut out anything. Thank you. Next, Rafael Varte. We completed the County Law and Public Safety Institute modernization project and allow our firefighters and police officers and EMS workers to, to train in environmental, uh, our, our environmental that mimic life, real life uh, scenarios. Our team also prioritizes seeking other funding opportunities such as grants to reduce the cost burden in our, uh, of our taxpayers. During COVID, Bergen County utilized hundreds of millions of dollars from the federal government to deliver services, vaccine and PPE. We also maintain our AAA bond rating which allow us to keep interest, interest rates down, making project costs more feasible for the county and municipalities for partner with us, who partner with us. Thank you. Thank you. Shala Collins. The question was about affordable housing, right? Um, it's, um, let me restate it. Um, 
People are concerned that Bergen County is too costly a place to live. Please tell us what county programs you think need better management to bring back fiscal responsibility and what programs you might want to cut to reduce county expenses. Okay, it's a loaded one. So <laughs> my response is really about affordability. I think we need more inclusive and equitable communities in Bergen County and efforts to increase the availability of affordable housing should consider subsidies, tax incentives, rent control and affordable housing initiatives to mitigate displacement. I can't speak on which programs I would cut. I'd have to look at that a little bit deeper. Thank you. Mary Jo Ginchard. Well, here's where I'm gonna go. I love budgets. I oversaw the budget when I was a mayor, and that's something that I take very, very seriously. It is your number one fiduciary fiscal responsibility. You are fiscally responsible to your voters, your residents, your taxpayers. You owe them that you look at everything in a very sharp way. When I became mayor, the first thing that I noticed was there was a dam that was having to be built, redone. We had an historic dam. It had been on the books for over 10 years. And there's no reason, that essentially wastes your money. If there's a project that needs to get moving, you must get it to fruition. So we worked it out as a board, found out where, why it was taking so long, and by the end of my term, we had a shovel in the ground. We bonded it, we did it in a very timely way, and very responsible. That's what I will bring to the table with all of the commissioners to see if there's any projects that we need to go and get moving so we're not wasting your money of having something sit, which could be flooding, all sorts of things that have a domino effect that can cause problems later on and that wastes your tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you. My next question. Many, many people believe that climate change is a serious threat facing our nation and our planet. Are there further steps that Bergen County can take to lessen its carbon footprint and employ more renewable energy sources? And we will start with Mary Jo Ginchard. I am so environmentally conscious that my husband sometimes, I think, wants to put me in the compost bin. <laughs> so, um, I love composting. It was, I think, my 20th wedding anniversary was to have a compost bin, and yes, I use it daily, love it. We have to do everything possible to make our planet, our environment, really wonderful, and at the same time, making sure that we're being responsible with your tax dollars doing it, and making sure it makes sense and making sure that we do it right. Buy America, I always say, is the number one thing. It's the best thing we could do because we're using our resources here that we have. We are the cleanest superpower on this planet. So we should utilize everything we can that's here. And I know that's you know up for all sorts of discussion, but we are the most clean for anything in energy wise. I also have an EV as well. Now, not everybody can afford an EV, or maybe everybody doesn't want one. So trees, trees are very important. We have to make sure that our land use is correct, that we're leaving all the right combinations. Trees are the carbon dioxide, and then they throw off the oxygen. So that is also helpful. So in, in closing, we have 10,000 acres of parks is what I am told here. We are responsible to make sure that we keep the land use correct for everyone that we can champion whatever is needed to make sure our environment is clean and work with commissioners to do so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joan Voss. Thank you. The county has taken action to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, we have replaced old and efficient light bulbs with uh, energy efficient LED light bulbs. We've installed solar panels on our facilities and we're eliminating styrofoams from our county property and parks. Today, 95% of the energy that we use is renewable. We have been installing electric vehicle charging units for the public and the county vehicles as we convert our fleet to EVs. Through shared service agreements, many, many of, of our municipalities are going to have access to a styrofoam 
it, something to, to get rid of this styrofoam from the county and save money and reduce the amount of waste. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Storms are getting worse, and we have need and we, we and we need the tools to respond to flooding and other disasters. We are ensuring that our first responders have access to equipment and training to respond to natural disasters caused by excessive flooding. We've start, we've, we, we have stacked our high water rescue vehicles strategically throughout the county to be ready at all moments notice in the areas where they are most needed. We, it, we, we, we've invested in swift water rescues training and provided protective water rescue gear to local first responders. Thank you. Thank you. Shala Collins. So I think it's essential to consult with local authorities, environmental organizations, and community to tailor these actions to the specific needs and conditions of Bergen County. Additionally, stay informed about the latest developments and climate action initiatives. Thank you. My next question. The congestion pricing plan currently proposed by the Metropolitan Transit Authority in New York City, if adopted and not modified, may cause more cars and trucks to shift to the George Washington Bridge to avo avoid new tolls, resulting in increased traffic in this area. What is your view of this plan? And we will start with Shala Collins. So I've heard a lot of buzz about that. Um, I'd have to look a little bit more into it. My view of it is that um, I would always be mindful of keeping New Jersey ends from paying more taxes. So I know there's a lot of back and forth and it's being disputed. Um, I stand on the side of us not having to pay those additional fees that come with this congestion pricing. Thank you. Mary Jo Binchard. Could you repeat the question one more time? Yes, I shall do so. The congestion, congestion pricing plan currently proposed by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority in New York City, if adopted and not modified, may cause more cars and trucks to shift to the George Washington Bridge to avoid new tolls, resulting in increased traffic in this area. What is your view of the plan? We already have enough traffic on 17. I'm sure that when you were coming here today, we all feel the impact of 17, it hasn't changed, I don't think, since I moved to New York, New Jersey area from New York City. The best thing that we can do in that regard is that we have to figure out as collectively, as your board, making sure we do not put the burden on you as a taxpayer of those decisions. There were the, there's a couple of projects I think that we are trying to look at with the, you know, there's the rail, the light rail, some of those several things. I know that, you know, they have been trying to get those projects going. We should be looking at items that can help us alleviate our traffic and make sure that anything that's gonna come over the bridge and disperse into our area, we are being able to mitigate that situation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joan Voss. Thank you. Uh, I live in Fort Lee. The George Washington Bridge is right about 100 yards away from the school I taught in. It is congested all the time. You can hardly get across. And so if this uh, congestion pricing goes through, it's going to get much, much, much worse. We are extremely opposed to congestion striking. The MTA is trying to balance their budget on the backs of New Jersey residents. And we stand with New Jersey District 5 Representative Josh Gottheimer as he has been a very vocal uh, advocate against congestion pricing. And I stand with him on that. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Uh, 
We are extremely opposed, as, as, as I mentioned, to uh, uh, congestion pricing. And the MTA, as said before, is trying to balance the budget on their, their budget on the backs of New Jersey residents. We totally oppose it, and uh, uh, we stand with New Jersey District 5 Representative Judge Pat Timer, as said before, and uh, uh, for a vocal advocate, a vocal advocate of against congestion pricing. Thank you. Thank you. My next question. Public transportation <coughs> in Bergen County is a recurring issue, especially for senior citizens and those on low or moderate income. What are your thoughts on improvements or additions? We will start with Mary Jo Ginchart. I apologize, I was coughing, so I didn't hear the very okay. beginning yeah. of your question. I, I will repeat it. Public transportation in Bergen County is a recurring issue, especially for senior citizens and those on low or moderate income. What are your thoughts on improvements or additions? Public transportation is probably one of the most important things that we can offer to our community, especially our senior citizens. I lived in a community that was much more confined away from the areas here that we have in New Jersey. And it was very difficult for the elderly because there weren't any public transportation, any of the senior you know, buses that can come around and bring them around. So it was a big burden. And you know, if you can't always get in certain areas the lifts and things that you need. So what's really attractive, I think, to New Jersey is you have many communities that really do lend to the senior community. And it's affordable. So we need to make sure that we champion those efforts, that they are available to them, that we communicate with those municipalities that may not have it so we can make sure that those services are being offered and that it doesn't cause more of a burden onto the taxpayer of whatever we're looking at and deciding upon. We are an aging society, so we need to make sure we are on top of and be proactive before things come to the forefront and we're reacting rather than planning ahead and putting those items in place. Thank you. Thank you. Joan Voss. Thank you. After decades and decades, we're finally able to address the bottleneck problem on Route 17. This afternoon, I spent more than an hour sitting on Route 17 because it was around 5 o'clock when I was coming in. And we actually now are moving this project into the preliminary engineering phase and advancing it uh, forward. The Division of Community Transportation last year provided rides to life-saving rides for, uh, to take senior citizens to doctor's appointment. Over 109,000 seniors, veterans, and residents with disabilities across the county were taken to their appointments. We work with our local municipal, yeah, our local municipalities to improve traffic and put in better uh, traffic signals. For so long, uh, Bergen County has been without very good transportation, but we're also working with federal and state partners, especially to replace the Hackensack <coughs> bus terminal so that a new state-of-the-art transit facility will be available to everybody. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Our Division of Community Transportation last year provided rights to life-saving doctors opportunities of 1,000, as mentioned before, 109,376 1, seniors, veterans, and residents with disabilities across the county. We worked with the local municipalities to improve traffic impediment, uh, implement uh, adaptive, adapt, adaptive signal systems and lower speed limits to improve safety. Thank you. Thank you. Shala Collins. So I need you to say the question again. Yes. I'm at the end, sorry. Okay. Uh, public transportation in Bergen County is a recurring issue, especially for senior citizens and those on low or moderate income. What are your thoughts on improvements or additions? I think they should definitely continue to build that light rail, maybe create new um, bus uh, patterns because, I mean, I grew up in New York City. Public transportation was vital. You were able to get anywhere you wanted to go in the city. And of course, Bergen County is not built like New York City, 
but I do see that there's a lot of opportunity for growth there. And there's certain locations that you can't get to unless you actually have a car. So I'd be for expanding that. Thank you. My next question. What priorities would you like to see in the next budget for the county? <coughs> Is there any specific department or agency that you consider particularly in need of attention? Attention, excuse me. And if so, why? And we will start with Shala Collins. So I don't know if this would be in the county's purview, but I know during COVID, um, uh, there was learning loss. The children lost a lot of learning by the schools being shut down. In fact, New Jersey was one of the states to keep the schools down shut for the longest. I would like to see funding put to provide free tutoring services to close the gaps in the learning loss in Bergen County. And our students are still suffering, still haven't caught up. And that expense is being pushed back on parents. And I don't think it's fair because they didn't have a choice. They weren't giving other options. Some of the kids were still able to go to school, where many kids in public schools weren't. So I'd like to see some kind of funding come, perhaps if the county works in conjunction with some of the municipalities to provide tutoring services to our children who were subject to learning loss <coughs> during COVID shutdowns. Thank you. Mary Jo Ginchart. I have actually two. So as I've stated before, Shala and I, we have gone to the 70 municipalities multiple times. Um, and we've heard, one of the big things we talked with the constituents about is the mental health that has come out of the lockdown. And I would really like to see that we address the youth, the teenagers, the adults. We have really, a growth, sadly to say, of mental health. <coughs> Suicide rates have gone up. So we really need to make sure, there's always room for improvement, that we have a fantastic county hospital that addresses these things. We can always make sure, are we doing our very best to address these issues? Because we're at a new level now that I think that we've really never seen before in this regard. The second <coughs> is trade schools. I really feel it's important. I know that the commissioners and our county has put a lot towards the trade schools, but we have some that are falling apart. Um, Teterboro is one of them. They hardly have any windows in it. It's a great school. It's 88th in the country. So we should be addressing that school as well as all the good work that's being done with all of the other trade schools because not everybody can afford to go to a university. So we need to make sure we're always on top of with our budget making the, our money go exactly being affordable, fiscally responsible on these issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joan Voss. Thank you. Uh, several years ago, we were in a terrible, terrible contract uh, with our Bergen County Hospital. Now it is called New Bridge Hospital. And nine years ago, the county changed course and made this public hospital one of the best in New Jersey, if not the best in New Jersey. Uh, we understood that we needed many resources to help those fighting addiction and to help fight against the opioid <laughs> epidemic. And very, very much we needed a critical mental health service provider, all of which um, the, uh, Newbridge uh, does take care of. We also got uh, veterans services at Newbridge Hospital so they didn't have to travel long distances to get the care that they needed. And we now have up there a, a, a new mammography ward and all kinds of things that will help all of the citizens of Bergen County. So this was something that we spent money, but it was well spent. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Thank you. For the county portion, I'm proud that, the Bergen, County, that Bergen County has the lowest tax rate in the state of New Jersey. And on average, the county portion of your pro of, uh, of property tax is between 10 and 12 percent. The remaining is your municipal tax, is your muni municipal and school taxes. We have been able to increase funding for senior services and programs while remaining, maintaining the lowest tax in the ca uh, tax rate in the state. We review the county budget line by line and make cuts every year. 
budgeting is an excessive in highlighting our priorities and we pro and we prioritize our first responders social services public safety and education thank you thank you may i say something or tell me when i can say something from that um rebuttal? uh the uh, rebuttals are not um allowed okay my next question rafael marte um oops <laughs> well He'll answer this first, excuse me. <laughs> All right, I apologize. What are your views of shared services between county and municipalities as a way to reduce expenses? If this is something you are in favor of, what would be your top priority areas for additional shared services? Is that question for me? It is, uh, it is for you and then for right somebody else. Shared services are a great way to save money while still providing top-notch services. We have at least one shared service contract with every single municipality in Bergen County to make government services more efficient and cost-effective. And we continue to pursue more contracts and continue expanding where it makes sense. Adding 150 new and renewed contracts just this year. Our shared services have saved taxes taxpayers over 10 million example range from financial services mechanical services for the repair of vehicles to inter local health services to 911 services the plowing services etc thank you thank you <clears throat> next Sherlock Collins so I think shared services is a, a great concept. In fact, when we've been on the, con the campaign trail, we talked to several different um, school board members who we've discussed shared services with. It's something that they're open to and they're interested in. And as far as this, what I'm going back to what I mentioned before, as far as something I would like to see the county work with, um, it still comes down to more tutoring. There needs to be investments in education because our children, while well, I've learned out being on the campaign trail, are really, really suffering and they've been set back. So I would say it definitely has to do with sharing services. Some school districts are underfunded compared to others. So I would definitely be a proponent for uh, shared resources, uh, shared services, sorry. Thank you. Mary Jo Ginchard. Shared services are something that I am truly an advocate for and I practiced it as a mayor. You can share services on all sorts of things. Um, the one of the things that we did was a lot of equipment. If a neighboring municipality um, has excess of equipment or equipment that they're not using, you help on that. The salt that you have, you know, municipalities can, you know, piggyback with their salt and things like that. You may use more in an area because your elevation was higher versus another. So there's all sorts of ways, and I know that a lot of shared services are going on right now, and that is critical. It does help trim your budget. You can be creative, and it's something that you should always comb your budget for and make sure you're doing the very best with shared services because you never know. You know, times change, situations change. So you can't just think it's one type of a service that you can do so. I'd also like to piggyback a little bit on the tax question that was done that has to do with shared services. We definitely are not, New Jersey is the number one of the most expensive taxes in the country. So to sit here and say we have low taxes, no. We don't have low taxes, we have super high taxes and that's why we've gotta work harder and trim what we need to trim so we can afford to stay in New Jersey and not lose people because we are losing tons of people out of this state by the thousands. So we've got to stop that. Thank you. I, would, I would ask for the audience to uh, hold their applause to the end. Thank you. Um, next, Joan Voss. Thank you. 
shared services is a wonderful thing to do, and we have many, many examples in Bergen County. Uh, just this past year, we also entered into a new shared, shared service agreement with um, Saya County to house inmates in our jail and bring revenue into Bergen County and making our jails more efficient. We are looking for more and more opportunities to develop shared services and uh, we will continue to do so in the future. Um, our shared services are so well regarded that we have been approached by many, many towns to become part of shared service with us. So thank you. Thank you. Next question. As a result of climate change, New Jersey will likely have more flooding in the future. Do you support stronger regulations to reduce or prevent building in certain areas? If so, can you explain how you would do this? And we will start with Joan Voss. Climate change has been happening for many, many years, and um, we have to you know, uh, look at the weather and see what's happening and prepare for it. Um, we are having more storms at this time, and I personally had a, a very, very bad flood in my house because we were not prepared for the amount of rain that we had. Um, I don't know, I taught history for a very, very long time, and um, climate change is sort of a secular thing. It happens and then it goes away, and it happens and it goes away. And so uh, we have to be prepared, and this is something that I think we're looking at all the time, okay, to make sure that our uh, infrastructure can support any of the things that may happen to us in the future. Thank you. Yes, please hold your applause to the end. Thank you. Uh, Rafael Marte. Thank you. The county has taken action to reduce our carbon uh, foot, uh, footprint. <coughs> we have replaced all efficient, inefficient light bulbs with energy efficient LED light bulbs, instead, installed solar panels in our facilities, and eliminated styrofoam on county property and parks. Today, 95% of the energy utilized in the county-owned buildings come from renewable sources. We have been installing an electric vehicles, charging units for the public and county vehicles for, to convert our fleet to EVs. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Shala Collins. I think you have to have some sort of resilience planning because if we are going to be preparing for climate change, there is it, there is a cost factor to it. So I don't have all the consultants and all the best people that are well versed on it. So I'd have to work with my community partners to come up with a plan. Um, there is some complaints that overdevelopment is also causing a lot of the flooding. But there has to be more studies for us to find out you know, where the real source of this is coming from. That's right. Mary Jo Ginchard. I'm sorry to keep saying that when I was mayor, but I actually had to deal with flooding issues. So I don't know if y'all recall during Hurricane Irene, I'm sure we all remember Hurricane Irene, where I was, Arden Dam broke at the same time it breached at the exact same time that the hurricane came through. That's when we discovered, unfortunately, that when that dam broke, went down the Ramapo River, all the way to Passaic and into New Jersey, it was a disaster. The rivers needed dredging. There was lots of debris in them. So immediately I contacted our congressman because as a municipality, you can't touch rivers and streams, that's federal. So you need Army Corps of Engineers. So our congressman came down, we put on our boots, not our cowboy boots, but we put on our water boots and we went down in there and that's when we discovered what bad shapes that were there. Unfortunately, there was an oil spill that occurred as well. So you must do proactive things in preparing yourself for if there is gonna be flooding because we are having these issues. So we need to look at our streams, look at our rivers, contact our assemblymen, contact our state senators, contact our congressmen, contact whoever we can to come do our analysis and let us know how we can prepare better without hitting you in your pocketbooks 
So we are, are doing it on the day it floods and not fix it before it floods. Thank you. Thank you. This is a somewhat similar question to what was asked earlier, uh, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, what policies, if any, would you support to increase the amount of affordable housing in Bergen County? We will begin with Mary Jo Ginchard. Well, as we all know, this is really a big issue of how do we help our veterans, our seniors, our young couples that are just getting married or just graduating from school to come and afford to live. So we really have to figure out what is the best scenario. We also, though, cannot be taking away a lot of land that we're needing as we just talked about flooding. You've got to have land that can perk. You have to have a combination of things. So it's kind of works hand in hand. You need affordable housing, you need transportation. When I was on the planning board in another state, in another county, we looked at revitalization, revitalizing communities. You just don't all of a sudden put up affordable housing. You need the housing to be close to your transportation. The person may not have a car. It needs to be a community that is close to a downtown. So either they can walk to the stores, do what they need to do. So affordable housing encompasses affordable living so it's not just the house. It's able to get to your church, get to the grocery store, get to your transportation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, Joan Voss. Thank you. Affordable housing is really the purview of the local municipalities. Okay. We can help in some instances, but it is the responsibility and the decision of the various communities. That being said, we support ensuring that there is housing for veterans, for seniors, and for those with disabilities. Uh, we have now um, a county division on veterans affairs, and I'm very happy to say that it's not it's the first of its kind, and we don't have any veterans who are homeless at this point. We uh, have many, many communities where we help them with uh, the American Dream, which is for first-time homeowners, where they can. Um, get a, a partner with local banks and uh, they provide funds so that people can at least get started with finding their first home. Um, one of the things that I'm very, very, very proud of is the fact that we are now building a, in Hackensack, a workforce housing unit. This is going to be because many, many people who are in our fire departments, our police departments, our teachers who are starting out can't afford to live here. It's absolutely impossible. And I work with a lot of young people and they're trying their darndest to live in Bergen County, but they can't do it because they're not making enough money. This is gonna be the first of a kind and I hope the first of many, many workforce housing projects that will be developed, not only in our county, but all over the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Thank you. We have provided community development block grants for special needs housing in Fort Lee, Glen Rock, and Tenafly, and others. We have just provided block grant funding for affordable senior housing in Little Ferry and Paramus. Throughout the federal community development grants, we can assist eligible homeowners with making repairs and improving their houses. We also have a, the American Dream First Time Home Buyer Program where we use federal funds to partner with local banks providing crucial loan assistance to those who want to buy a home in Bergen County. We also uh, spearheaded the importance of uh, the important project which will provide workforce housing for best and for, uh, for, for our best and brightest volunteers, first responders, and educators. Thank you. Thank you. Shalaw Collins. Um, so affordable housing obviously is a huge issue, but it's also an issue because we don't only want a owner, of, we don't only want a community of renters, you do want people to own homes someday. So I think we should expand uh, affordable home ownership programs. I know uh, Ms. Voss mentioned the American Dream. I know there's a NACA program, 
but I think we should try to help our youths actually get a home. Maybe uh, helping moderate income individuals and families um, through down payment assistance or low interest mortgages, although now the barrier has even gotten worse because I believe just the other day it was announced 30 year mortgages are like 8% now. So folks are not even going to be able to get into the market at all, which is just gonna cause more of an issue. So um, I definitely be for um, looking into expanding some of these programs. I want everyone to experience the American dream. And that's that. Thank you. My next question, what do you think the most valuable service um, the county offers is? Um, and we will start with Joan Boss. The most valuable, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the most question. Most valuable service. What do you think the most valuable service the, um, the county offers? We have so many valuable services. Uh, we have a department with many subdivisions called the Department of Human Services. And people of all ages can get help from them. They really, really, really have things, uh, and really, they don't charge uh, for many of the services that they provide. And for children, uh, one of the things that we provide is counseling for uh, domestic violence. We have several um, groups that meet. We do so many things and so many services that I really can't pinpoint one special thing uh, to say that this is the most important because everybody needs help and everybody doesn't have money. And we on the county provide many services that people can't afford to do individually. So thank you. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Thank you. I think there is more than one highest priority. I think uh, public safety. Uh, ensuring Bourbon County is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. Infrastructure and transportation safety, uh, and transportation, safety, for, safety of roads, and reducing congestion. Maintaining fiscal responsibility. I am proud that Bergen County has the lowest tax rate in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Jalot Collins. I think the most valuable services the county offers is the services that's offered to our seniors. There's lots of resources for the seniors. I actually um, was bringing a senior to, I wanna say one, Bergen <coughs> Plaza. And um, I was able to speak to um, some of the workers there who actually introduced me to all the different programs that they have available for seniors. And then we also partied with the seniors at the senior picnic, right? Was that at a fan? Van Van Son Park just recently. So um, I would say the most valuable service, at least that I've experienced, has been with the services that are given to our seniors. Mary Jo Ginchar. I'm gonna go back to a couple of things. Mental health, I think, is number one on my list. And I am so happy that we do have two great facilities, Valley and the New Bridge. That is critical and we can never not keep those resources for them funded. It is so, so critical. The other is are the seniors, the veterans. Uh, you know, we have traveled I can't even tell you how many miles we put on our cars. It has been rewarding, amazing, and the programs that are out there for the seniors are critical. Critical. We are an aging society. We cannot just let our seniors go by the wayside. They've got activities. We've gone to so many events where it's for the, you know, they're dancing for the Polish and the Irish, and everybody has an event going on, and no one is being excluded. You know, when you're active, you're dancing, you're singing, you're laughing, you live a much better life. You're happier. So that's so critical. The schools for the children. My love are our children. I have a new grandchild and another grandchild, and I think education is the most utmost importance that we can be doing. We have several trade schools. We have a couple of county schools, the high school, the college, here we are in the college, having those available, because not everybody can go to an Ivy League school, et cetera. So thank you for all of that, thank you. Thank you. My next question, 
There was a recent lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of New Jersey's gun laws. Do you support loosening gun laws or not? And what effect, if any, do you think loosening gun laws will have on Ber Bergen County? Uh, we will start with Shala Collins. So loosening was the question? Uh, I'll repeat it. There was a recent lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of New Jersey's gun laws. Do you support loosening gun laws or not? And what effect, if any, do you think that loosening these gun laws will have on Bergen County? I take issue with the loosening. I mean, it's kind of vague. Loosening, what exactly does that mean? Loosening in what capacity? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll just say, I mean, I, I understand that there are different laws and, you know, for, for me, I mean, I, I support the Second Amendment, um, but if you're going to say loosening, you know, loosening laws, it's, it's just too vague for me to just answer. So I'm just going to say I, I, I support the Second Amendment. Okay. Next. Um. an opportunity for a, a nice round of applause at the end, I assure you. Um, Mary Jo Ginchard. Well, I'm sure you've seen our social media. I wear cowboy boots, not because I think they're cool, but because I'm from Texas. <laughs> and I totally support the Second Amendment. But I don't think guns belong in a child's hands. Unfortunately, though, if someone wants a gun, they're going to find it. So we have to make sure that those who sell the guns, that's where it has to be strict. They cannot just let someone take a gun. New Jersey has some pretty good gun laws. You can't just walk into a store. You used to be able to walk into a Kmart and just go buy a gun. Well, that, those days are over. You can't just go buy a truckload of ammunition anymore. You have to be vetted. You have to have a letter of recommendation, several letters of recommendation. You have to go to your police department. You're vetted. You then go get you some training. You find get your weapon. You aren't given that weapon at the moment you get it. Some time has to go by. But it's not the guns that kill people. It's the people that kill people that get the guns. They're in the wrong hands. I don't have the answer to that question. How do we fix that? The only way we can do is get better and making sure that those guns don't end up in the wrong hands, if possible. But the Second Amendment is the Second Amendment. It stands. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Uh, Joan Voss. Thank you. Uh, I taught the Constitution for many, many years, and the Second Amendment is sacrosanct as far as I'm concerned. And so people in this country fought for the right to be able to support themselves and one of the things they need to do, I, I know that you can get a gun anytime in this country illegally, that's for sure. And one of the things I worry about is when you put too strict laws on people who have guns, but they don't pertain to the people who are doing it illegally, and, and this is a problem that we have to deal with. One of the things that gets me very upset is wondering how much of vetting does a person have when they go to buy a gun? Because so many of the crimes that are committed today are committed by people who have mental health issues. And we're not checking this out. Okay, so um, the Constitution is the Constitution, and I support our Constitution a thousand percent. So thank you. Thank you. Rafael Marte. Thank you. I support our Constitution. However, I believe that uh, uh, people people kill people, but people kill people with guns. And there are too many people being ki killed and too many children being slaughtered in schools and everywhere. I believe that before we loosen our gun laws, we have to tighten them to reduce the death of people and young, young families. Too many people are suffering nowadays. And it's because too many guns are out there and they're not supposed to be in, a, in our streets. 
And uh, that's my position. Thank you. Again, I do have it all be an opportunity for applause at the end. Thank you very much. My next question. There have been a lot of questions nationally about voter fraud. Do you believe that there is widespread voter fraud in Bergen County or not? <laughs> and I will start with Rafael Marte. Thank you. Well, I believe in our system. I believe in uh, the voting, the, the, uh, uh, our system, and uh, I trust it. And uh, uh, I don't think that there are voter, uh, uh, voters uh, uh, fraud at this time. And uh, uh, that is my position again. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Shala Collins. I think there are opportunists no matter where you go. As far as fraud goes, I know there was a regulation, there was irregularities going on in several places. I've heard about machines shutting down. And I think that New York, not New York, I'm sorry, I'm like, oh. 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 I think, oh. <laughs> well, well, New York could benefit from this too. I think we need voter ID in the Yay. state of New Jersey. Yay. If you want to if you want to stop questioning and wondering about things, you should have voter ID. It's very simple. Suppress simple vote, solution. Man. That's what you want to do, suppress the vote. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Want to make sure the um, vote is real. Next, next person, <laughs> next person, Mary Jo Ginchuk. Well, it, this is a really easy answer. If you've had a member of your family die, right? you have to go through a process at the funeral home. That immediately starts getting purged, but it doesn't get purged at the voter board of elections. That's right. If you need a passport, which we all need passports, we all need all of these things, right? They're starting to impose that. That's not suppressing anything, but when you die, that number gets purged out of the system. When you wanna drive a car, you gotta get a driver's license. When you die, that number gets purged out of the system. That's right. Why, and they already have all this information. So why aren't we just merging everything? When we pay taxes, by the way, if you owe money, the IRS knows where you are. That's right. And when you die, and you get your social security of your $200 on your death benefit, and you're purged out of the system, you're not getting any more of that $200. So voter ID is the answer. It's simple, they already have it in place, but it's not for us to do it. We've gotta push the levels in Washington and in the state, get the voter ID, or I'm not making them any brownies at all whatsoever, <laughs> that's it. Woo! Joan Boss. Thank you. Uh, I'm very proud of our election board. Uh, our elections are safe and secure for many reasons. We have many safeguards on hand to protect them. Elections in Bergen County are overseen by a superintendent of election and a board of election. They are bipartisan, okay? They are made up of equal numbers of Republicans and Democrats. Democrats and Republicans in those positions have all spoken out on the integrity of our election system. Signatures are checked on every vote by mail. <coughs> and the Board of Elections also supervise drop box pickups and the opening and counting of all vote by mail ballots. Each candidate has the ability to have poll watchers at each and every polling location. Voters in Bergen County should have full confidence in our elections and the results of their elections. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we are now going to go to closing statements. Uh, each candidate will have two minutes for a closing statement in the reverse order of the opening statement, and the timekeeper will give a 30 second warning. And we will start with Rafael Marte. Thank you. Thank you again to the League of Women Voters. Thank everyone for being here. They were 
lot of important issues discussed tonight that, that, that deserve our attention and consideration. Public safety, infrastructure, transportation, education, and many more. I have learned a lot over the, the past seven months on the Board of, of Commissioners, and I have been extremely grateful to serve beside such dedicated and well-versed individuals. I am fully committed to using my two terms on the, on the Bergenfield Council and 30 years of experience as a social worker, husband, and a father to work towards <coughs> and even better Bergen, Bergen County. You have heard from my opponents, but it seems as if they do not understand what it means to be a county legislator. Our team has considerably increased social <laughs> services, senior services, transportation services, accessibility, recreation, and public safety support, all while making smart investments for our future and holding on the line on taxes. We have prioritized the diverse needs of our residents and are consistently working to improve what we have to offer. We continue to lower the county debt that, that the previous administration left behind and restore and enhance the services that were cut. We all, to all the voters here tonight, tuning in, in, or, in uh, or elsewhere, I hope you will choose Joan and me to keep Bergen County moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joan Voss. Thank you. In closing, I'd like once again to thank the League of <laughs> Voters for hosting this forum. This forum serves as a method of educating our audience and the people of Bergen County and to inform them about the issues facing our county and to help them make good decisions when they go to the polls in November. As a staunch proponent of education, I commend the League for its efforts because I use my office to teach people about the services that Bergen County offers. And I feel that being a part of government is also being a teacher. Learning is never over, and you never stop learning, and you never stop caring. And my dedication to these principles are reflected of my dedication to the people of Bergen County. As we look to the future in this county, we understand how important it is to have competent, capable, and compassionate leaders in government. I'm proud of what I have accomplished over the many years I have been serving and excited for what is going to happen in the future for Bergen County, where everybody who comes here would love to live, work, and raise a family here. I truly love what I do, and I will continue to be a strong advocate for all <coughs> the people of Bergen County, and that is a promise that I intend to keep. Thank you. Shalom Collins. As we close this forum, I want to thank the audience again for your participation, your questions, and your attention to this office. As previously stated, I believe transparency, accountability, and a responsive government is the foundation of our democracy and constitutional republic. High inflation has harmed economic growth and eroded the purchase and power of working people, also people in Bergen County. Mm -hmm. County government has increased by 34% since the Democrats have been in control. Mary Jo and I will be fiscally responsible as your county commissioners and always keep the financial interests of our taxpayers in mind. It is the power of an informed and civil discourse that stitches us together. Maybe we have differing opinions, but our shared commitment to a better future unites us. Thank you for being part of this vital dialogue and may our collective voices shape a brighter tomorrow. I believe in the enduring power of common sense to guide us in making decisions that benefit our community. Together we can chart a course based on reason, responsibility, and common good. Both for Ignatia Collins and Mary Joanne Ginchard to support a future where common sense prevails on Tuesday, November the 7th. Thank you.
in charge. First of all, I am a great public <laughs> official and I will never tell another candidate or an elected official they don't know what they're talking about. Especially if you have to read everything word for word and you've been in office for so long, oh. you should kind of have some stuff on the top of your because I got it up here. Mm. So with that said, thank you so much. So, I'll take my time. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Unfortunately, we do have the highest taxes in this country, so I would not tell that we are so great about our taxes. We definitely have the highest taxes. Look on the U.S. News, look on every website you can find, and you will find that's not true. Secondly, there's always going to be a problem with anything. So to say you've wiped out this, veterans are not homeless anymore. We've been around these 70 municipalities. Right. We've talked with everybody. And let me tell you, there are some homeless veterans out there and I want to make sure that we do our best. But to sit there and say we've wiped something out means you're not staying on top of it because nothing is perfect. So with that said, I'll talk really fast here. Um, thank you for, we talked about pressing issues. You have seen that Shala and I stand out quite a bit here. We understand the challenges that we face every day, the high cost of living, the strain of the infrastructure, all sorts of things. I'm not going to even read this. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank that we live in a great state. We're going to address the flooding issues. We're going to address how to make voting good. We're going to go to every municipality over and over to make sure the seniors are good, the veterans are good. We are back in the blue. <laughs>